Now we're taking a look at the underbelly of supply chains. On the one end, you see a bar of chocolate in a shiny wrapping. But let's rewind a little bit from the expensive processing and marketing. The Ivory Coast and Ghana are the world's first and second biggest coca producers. And many people there are so poor that they can never afford the final product. So the two governments have decided to team up to get a bigger share of the global chocolate profits. They say they'll coordinate production levels and sales policies, and that could mean the cost of a bar of chocolate will go up. Candy Industry publishes an annual list of the top 100 global confectionery companies, ranking them by net sales. In 2017, the American manufacturer Mars was ranked as the leading confectionery company in the world with sales of about 18 billion US dollars. Italy-based Ferrero Group, which makes Kinder and Nutella, came in at number two. And Mondelez International, which makes branded chocolate such as Cadbury, ranked third net sales, coming in at $11.5 billion last year. We're joining us now via Skype from Davos, Switzerland, is Anthony Fountain, managing director of the Voice Network, a coalition of European NGOs and trade unions that focus on sustainable coca. Thanks very much for being with us. So uh, can I assume that you are in favor of what Ivory Coast and Ghana are trying to do here in terms of, of, of getting a bigger share of, of, of the spoils. Uh, tell us why and why now? In the last year and a half, we've seen a major price crisis in the cocoa sector that specifically in Cote d'Ivoire has had devastating results for cocoa farmers. They've seen their income reduced by about 37% overnight. Um, these farmers were already desperately poor, and so measures need to be taken to address the, uh, the extreme poverty of cocoa farmers. Um, and there's a very important role for governments to play in this. Uh, the price crash was to a large extent due to overproduction, and so the, the two major cocoa producing nations really should work together to ensure that there is a higher cocoa price through managing the supply. That might take some time before those effects start getting in, but it is essential that they start moving forward, start working together, and start working on a better income for cocoa farmers, amongst others through pricing interventions. And how much power do the cocoa producers uh, have here? Because in terms of taking on the, the, the chocolate industry as it currently is, uh, they are up against some powerful forces on the other side in, in, in the, the, cho the companies. So when you look at the way prices are set, a lot of that is done through kind of terminal markets, which is a very complex set of computers basically looking at um, what's happening. And so that's almost impossible to change. But if you look at the fact that Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire together do about two thirds of all of the cocoa in the world, then if they would want to, and if they make the right interventions, they could very much impact uh, 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 the the situation of the world's cocoa market, um, at least in the, in the short to medium term. Um, the, the, it's a no-brainer that if you've got two countries that do so much cocoa, of course they can have an impact if they want to. The problem potentially as well, though, is that you have two countries there who have very different policies uh, when it comes to the, to the cocoa market. They, they have different ways about, of going about it, about setting the price and, and, and so on. How do you get them to cooperate? Well, they've started working together now, at least uh, at a top level of trying to talk with each other, which for the longest time they were direct competitors. And so kind of the, for these first tentative steps are good first steps. But the question really is, um, how is this going to work out in the medium to long term? And that will require a lot more trust than they currently have in each other. And to be very honest, I think it will also require more integrity that they'll do the right thing. Um, because in the end, historically speaking, both nations have really tried to get the bigger piece of the pie for themselves, understandably so. Um, but that, that, that in economic terms, we talk about a zero-sum game, where one person wins at the other person's loss, and it doesn't work that way. Um, they need to work together to get to a better position for their farmers. From a consumer perspective, is this eventually going to mean us paying more uh, for chocolates at the, uh, at the sweet shops? Oh, I certainly hope so, because currently we're not paying for what we're buying. There's a lot of hidden costs in the chocolate that we buy um, that 
were simply too cheap to pay for. Um, cost of child labor and deforestation and extreme poverty. And the people paying for that are the farmers and future generations. So I certainly hope that we will end up paying more for our chocolate because we're not paying enough now. Appreciate you talking to us. Anthony Fountain joining us there from Davos. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you.